Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and we are doing a series of videos about the foundations of earthing and lichen protection systems. In the previous video, we had spoken about the different types of earthing systems like TT, TN, IT. You can go check out that video. But today, we are going to learn about earth resistance and how you can measure it. Electrical systems are prone to fault at any time due to a variety of reasons. This could be such as equipment failure, power surges due to lightning strikes or power variation in the grid. There are a lot of reasons why there could be a fault. However, these faults can be hazardous to anyone who is handling electrical equipment at that time because they become an instantaneous path for current to flow through. On such occasions, there is a need for proper earthing to prevent the fault current from entering the body or any metallic object. The purpose of earthing is to minimize the effect of transient voltage that occurs from any fault current that occurs in the circuit. So what is earth resistance? First of all, we need to understand earth electrodes. Earth electrodes are the pipes, the plates or the rod conductors which are buried in the ground for the purpose of earthing. The resistance offered by these earth electrodes to the flow of overcurrent from the circuit to the ground is called earth resistance. So whenever we have an earth electrode ready for a structure, the next step is to measure the earth resistance offered by it. Now let's see how earth resistance is measured. Firstly, earthing connections are made by burying earth electrodes at several places close to the structure that has to be earthed. As mentioned earlier, an earth electrode is a metal pipe or a conducting plate that is placed within the soil or connected to the earth. There are different materials that are used to make these earth electrodes that can be copper, steel or even galvanized iron. The type of electrode for earthing is chosen depending on the requirements of the electrical system and the soil resistivity of that location. There are four factors that affect the earth resistance of a grounding system. Firstly, the composition of the soil. Secondly, the moisture content of that soil. Thirdly, the temperature. And number four, the depth of the earth electrode. The earth resistance as a result can vary anywhere from a single ohm to thousands of ohms. Soil identification, earthing and intensive field measurements show that the soil resistivity values depend upon the soil type. For example, in rocky areas which have high resistivity, the resistance can be lowered by a buried network of well-designed earth mats. There are different methods to measure earth resistance depending on the different types of earthing systems. Remember, these earthing systems can be TT, IT, TN or anything else. You can check out our other video to see the different types of earthing systems. It also depends on the type of installation, whether it is urban, rural, residential, industrial or anything else. There are six basic test methods to test earth resistance. Number one, the three terminal method or the fall of potential method. Number two, the four point or the Wenner method. Number three is the two point method. Number four is the clamp on test. Number five is the slope method and number six is the star delta method. We're going to speak about all of these methods in detail now. First of all, let's talk about the three terminal method, also called the fall of potential method. This is the most commonly used method for measuring earth resistance and it is based on the IEEE 81 2012 standard. It is suitable for transmission line structures. In this method, earth resistance is calculated using Ohm's law which is resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Here, we measure the voltage and current by connecting two electrically independent test electrodes to the earth electrode. We consider three points of ground contact, namely the earth electrode, a current probe and a voltage probe. For earth resistance measurement, a digital earth tester injects current into the earth electrode under test the alternating current is passed through the outer electrode and the voltage is measured by the inner electrode at an intermediary point between the inner and outer electrodes. The current then flows from the earth to the remote current probe and returns to the tester. As the current flows, a voltage drop takes place 
and this voltage drop is proportional to the amount of current flow and the resistance of the earth electrode. Several locations calculate earth resistance by moving the voltage probe at regular intervals. The display of the digital earth tester shows the resistance value. For earth resistance measurement, the crucial factor is to position the auxiliary test electrode far away from the earth electrode under test to ensure that the auxiliary test electrode will lie outside the resistance areas of both the earth system and the other test electrode. Some features of the fall of potential method are that number one, it is one of the most reliable test methods. Number two, it is more suitable for large grounding systems. Okay, let's go on to the second test method, the four point method or the Wenner method. The four point method or Wenner method is similar to the fall of potential method, except that the number of electrodes for measurement is different. In this method, four electrodes are driven into the ground along with a straight line at equal intervals. A current is passed through the two outer electrodes and the earth and the voltage difference is observed between the two inner electrodes. The current flowing into the earth produces an electric field proportional to its density and the resistivity of the soil. The voltage measured between the inner electrodes is therefore proportional to the field. As a result, we get the resistivity value which is proportional to the ratio of the voltage to the current. This is also a very efficient method for measuring earth resistance. Next, we're going to talk about the slope method. The slope method is used for measuring earth resistance of large and complex earthing systems such as power stations. In this method, it is possible to calculate the actual resistance with several electrodes. This method is similar to the fall of potential method, but includes taking a number of resistance measurements at various earth systems to the voltage electrode separations. After measurement, it is required to plot a graph of the resistance variation between the earth and the current to find the optimal resistance. Finally, we have the star delta method. The star delta method is well suited in areas with large systems or in rocky terrains where it is difficult to place the test electrodes. In the star delta method, three test electrodes are placed at the corners of an equilateral triangle with the earthing system at the center. Measurements are taken for the total resistance between adjacent electrodes and between each electrode and the earthing system. Once the earth resistance measurement is complete and found to be matching to the tolerance level, the earthing system is safe. Regular inspections are needed to ensure the efficiency of the earthing system. All the ground and ground connections need to be checked at least annually as a part of the predictive maintenance plan. Finally, I would like to share a few steps that you can use to reduce earthing resistance. Firstly, maintain the moisture content of the earth. Pour water into the earthing point from time to time. Number two, increase the contact area of the electrode. Earth resistance can be maintained by increasing the thickness or surface area of the rod used for earthing. Number three, increase the depth of the electrode. Earth resistance can be reduced by placing the earth electrode at a greater depth. Use of an earthing compound salt and coal or other compounds like marconite and bentonite can be applied to the earth pit while the electrode is inserted in the soil to maintain soil resistivity. I hope this video has provided a better understanding on earth resistance. We're going to be doing a series on earthing and lightning protection. Subscribe and like to get more content.